debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. Children on their way to school in the West Wales county of Pembrokeshire. They are just some of the hundreds of young students ferried each day to Priscelli School in the small town of Crummer. The school is in the heart of the rural Welsh-speaking Priscelli region. It's an official bilingual school, which means some teaching is in English, but the majority of classwork is in Welsh. Good academic results and enthusiasm for the language, mixed with official recognition and support for Welsh within the UK, have proved to be a recipe for success. Ten years ago, Priscelli School had four to five hundred students. That has now doubled. In years gone by, the number of Welsh speakers was certainly going down, and those learning Welsh in school was going down. Uh, if we didn't do something about it and we didn't educate people through the medium of Welsh, there was, there was a chance that the Welsh language might die. Uh, what's happened in the meantime is, is there's been a great increase and a great demand for Welsh language education. A drama class in Breton at the bilingual Diwan school in Camper in the Brittany region of Western France. The first Diwans opened 30 years ago and good exam results, combined with increasing demand, has seen the network expand to a present-day total of nearly 40. <laughs> Following the D1's success, bilingual education was later introduced into state and Catholic schools. These divide tuition equally between Breton and French, while the D1s use an immersion method with a much higher proportion of Breton. <laughs> But the French Conseil d'État has ruled that the immersion method is contrary to the French Constitution, which states that French is the language of the Republic. In 2002, it refused to incorporate the Diwans into the national educational system, which means they're forced to cover around half their costs themselves. Breton campaigners say the future of the Breton language depends on the immersion method used by the Diwans and that the French state must change its attitude towards regional languages. There is this ideology which means that only French is promoted across the whole of France and even the overseas territories, and that other languages don't really even get a mention. It effectively means that people who speak languages apart from French are treated as kind of second-class citizens when they express themselves through their language and culture. But the education authority insists that more and more children are learning Breton each year and that both methods of bilingual teaching are equally valid. The Breton language is an important part of our national heritage and more and more people want to learn Breton. I think the two ways of learning Breton, which are the system of equal hours in Breton and French and the immersion system, are both excellent and allow anyone who wants to learn the language to learn it in the way that they want and at the speed they want. 2008 marks the 10th anniversary of the Charter for Regional or Minority Languages, set up by the human rights organisation the Council of Europe to promote and protect such languages throughout its 47 member states. So far, 33 countries have signed, but only 22 of them, including the UK but not France, have gone on to ratify the Charter, which actually brings it into effect. The Council says more ratifications are needed. It is very important that we build in all our member countries cohesive societies, inclusive societies, where everybody feels involved, included, nobody feels shut out. And if someone has a regional minority language as a mother tongue, it's very important that they feel that this is respected by other people. Welsh is seen as well as heard in and around Krimich. It plays a key role in local life and is spoken by both young and old. <laughs> In recent years, the Priscelli region has become popular with English and other non-Welsh-speaking families relocating to the area. Londoner Alice James met her future husband while visiting Wales. She decided to learn Welsh after joining him in Crymach 
going on to win the Welsh Learner of the Year award in 2002. They now have three children who are all bilingual, and she believes others should follow her example. I'm living in Wales. I have no intention of moving anywhere else. I'm living in a very special part of Wales where the Welsh language is alive, you know, and that's due to the efforts of people, you know, not just like myself, but people that are really making an effort to see Welsh revived and Welsh kept alive, you know, in schools, in communities, youth clubs, different groups, chapels. And I think that's really important to be a part of that. Every person that speaks Welsh should, you know, ensure that they're a part of that because, you know, the language will not survive if we don't pass it on. Cremach is twinned with Plovel, or Plomela in French, a small Breton town on the outskirts of Camper, famous for its ancient standing stones and a unique buckwheat whisky. Guy Lelay is the owner of the Meunier distillery in Plomela and was the first president of the twinning association for the two towns when it was set up in 1983. Tous les gens qui Everyone who's been to Wales is mesmerized by the fact that they don't speak English. They expect the Welsh to speak English and are completely bowled over by the fact that they speak in Welsh and that they can, in this day and age, speak Welsh. It's a point echoed by Welsh-speaking Cardiff-based lawyer Emir Lewis. He's the UK's representative on the Committee of Independent Experts for the Charter of Regional or Minority Languages, which carries out monitoring in the Council of Europe's member states. The main difference now is that the Welsh language uh, enjoys a degree of support from the authorities that the Breton language does not, and that there is, um, not universal, but on the whole, respect and tolerance for the Welsh language and speakers of the language which is sadly missing in some aspects of French civil society in relation to Breton. I think that the Welsh have succeeded in doing something quite extraordinary. By that I mean that they have succeeded in saving their language. And I think also that the English haven't been too much against them, particularly in recent times. I think that the English have understood that the minorities are of great interest, and I don't think that the French have yet understood that. So, while the signs are good for some of the more than 60 regional or minority languages spoken in Europe, the future for others is less clear. But if more countries can be persuaded to ratify the Charter to give these languages greater protection, more of them are likely to be heading in the right direction.